In this video, we're going to look at the role of enzymes in digestion. We'll describe the structure and function of the major parts of the digestive system. We'll explain how the digestive system breaks down food, both physically and chemically. And we'll explain the role of enzymes in the digestion of carbohydrates, lipids and fats. Let's start with starch. Starch is a large polymer made of glucose units. It's insoluble and it's branched. And its digestion takes place in two steps. Firstly, starch is broken down to maltose by the enzyme amylase, which is found in your saliva. Secondly, the maltose that's produced is broken down to glucose, and that's done by maltase. So like many enzymes involved in digestion, it's a two-step process. Starch is a large, branched, insoluble molecule. When it's digested, we get the disaccharide, maltose. And maltose is made up of two glucose units joined together with a glycosidic bond. So where does the production of maltose, i.e. the breakdown of starch, take place? Starch digestion begins in the mouth. Salivary amylase is released from salivary glands, which are exocrine glands, into the saliva. And the salivary amylase starts the first part of starch digestion and begins to make the disaccharide maltose. Now we know that information from year 7 and year 8 and certainly from GCSE. However, salivary amylase plays a, a relatively minor role in the digestion of starch. After all, the food isn't in the mouth for very long and the pH changes when you swallow the food and it enters the stomach. Often the food we eat is hot it's still hot in the mouth, and of course that heat would denature the enzyme. However, we also know that the pancreas secretes amylase, pancreatic amylase. And this is where the majority of our starch is hydrolyzed into the disaccharide maltose. How do we get from maltose to glucose? Well, this occurs in the small intestine. Maltase, the enzyme, is a membrane-bound enzyme that hydrolyzes the maltose into two glu glucose units. We came across this at GCSE, and it makes perfect sense that we would want to fix some of our enzymes in the membrane, because like all good catalysts, only small amounts are needed, and they can be used again and again. Look at this model of some epithelial cells in the small intestine. The maltase is embedded in the membrane. Here we see the disaccharide sugar, maltose, move towards that enzyme and as the units break away, single units of glucose are then able to be absorbed into the epithelial cells. Now let's change our substrate from starch to protein. Digestion of protein is also described as hydrolysis. Of course, proteins are polymers of amino acids and proteases are a group name of lots of different types of protein enzymes that digest proteins. And included in the group of proteases are a type of enzyme described as endopeptidases. They hydrolyze peptide bonds in the middle of the polymer. This then creates shorter chains of amino acids and another group of enzymes called exopeptidases can then begin to break or let's say hydrolyze the peptide bonds that holds the amino acids together there into dipeptides. And a dipeptide is basically like a disaccharide. It's two amino acids joined together. Let's consider why this is an efficient form of digestion. As food passes along the gut, it's mixed first with endopeptidases and then later with exopeptidases. Well, the reason why this makes it more efficient is because there's so many more polypeptides then that have free ends for the exopeptidases to cause an effect. They, of course, hydrolyze every other bond and therefore leave the dipeptidases to hydrolyze the dipeptides into single amino acids. You can also ask the question, why don't proteases digest the cell that they are produced in? Well, proteases are often produced in an inactive form. They become activated when they reach their site of action. 
For example, pepsin starts its life as pepsinogen. When it comes into contact with hydrochloric acid in the stomach, it then forms the active form of pepsin. Trypsin is a protease released by the pancreas. And trypsin begins its journey as another enzyme called trypsinogen. Trypsinogen is the inactive form of trypsin. When trypsinogen reaches its site of action, there is another membrane-bound enzyme that activates it. The membrane-bound enzyme is called enterokinase. And trypsin is an endopeptidase that makes smaller chains so that as we reach the end of the small intestine, more and more amino acids are broken off using exopeptidases and dipeptidases. The concept of this two-step reaction becomes important later on when we look at people who have genetic abnormalities. A person might make the first enzyme but may not make the activating enzyme or vice versa. So physical digestion involves mastication from the teeth and also the churning of the stomach and chemical digestion is based on chemicals, in other words enzymes and the hydrochloric acid of your stomach. There are a group of carbohydrates that are membrane bound enzymes. Sucrase is one of them, maltase and lactase. And what we're trying to do at A-level is really lift our answers beyond GCSE. So what we want to do, if we know the bond, we know the substrate, we know the product, we don't use the word digest anymore, we use the word hydrolyze. And we can use this model to help us formulate our answer. We need to be able to describe the production of my cells, and we need to describe the action of endopeptidases, exopeptidases, and dipeptidases. So let's have a look at some of those answers. And for question three here, we're bringing together all our A-level knowledge to show that we are beyond GCSE and we are indeed in A-level class. So, for instance, let's take lactase. Lactase hydrolyzes the glycosidic bonds in lactose to form the disaccharides, glucose and galactose, which are both monosaccharides. And it's just worth being able to think of the advantages of membrane-bound enzymes. In other words, them being fixed in one place. Remembering that an enzyme is a catalyst, it can be reused, but it's also a protein which can itself be hydrolyzed. By embedding the enzyme in the membrane and only exposing the active site to the lumen, the enzyme evades digestion.